teaching children biblical principles is very important. They need a good solid foundation. But is there much Christian material in Israel? I spoke with Greg Olson, a volunteer with a translation service, and asked him that very question. There hasn't been much in the past at all, Paul. We are. I work with this ministry that has a vision, and our vision statement is to take material uh, from America that comes from a uh, Pentecostal perspective. It's wonderful material, but what we do is we take that material, we with permission, and we translate it into Hebrew to be used. So we take Sunday school material from America, we translate it into Hebrew, put a Messianic perspective on it. The, the, the translators are Israelis, believers, Messianic Jewish people that were born and raised here, so they have a very Israeli Messianic perspective. And what we do, we make this available for them. It is a ministry. Uh, we're really blessed with the technology that we have nowadays. It's amazing how you can take material uh, with not a, uh, a huge budget, but a medium-sized budget, and produce quality material for these people. It is a ministry. We ask for them to help with the, cover the, some of the costs. But this ministry has been going on now for about 12 years, I think, it's been going on. They started out very simple, using the most simple technology, the simplest translation, but the project is mature and grown. And out of the, right now, there's around 60 or so established Messianic congregations within the country that are Hebrew, uh, where there's a firm, you know, there, we have home groups that are smaller here and there, but this is congregations, bodies with a leader. So out of those 60-something, 40 congregations are continuing to purchase our material, uh, by giving a donation, we give them. The, it's a full quarter, 13 lessons with posters, themes. We develop our own games. We have two local Israeli artists that do all our graphic work for them. We are producing now. We are producing original work, like we're just now working on Captivity and Return, the story of the, the Jewish people going into captivity and then returning to the land, and then tying that into our need to be uh, set free from our bondage of sin. And we're just getting ready to print next month. We'll be printing, which will be about a three-week process to take all this material. It's been about two years in the development. To do, it takes about two years to do one quarter for teachers, and we'll be printing that material. And it's lovely material, and it's wonderful because there is not teaching children biblical principles is very important. They need a good solid foundation. But is there much Christian material in Israel? I spoke with Greg Olson, a volunteer with a translation service, and asked him that very question. There hasn't been much in the past at all, Paul. We are. I work with this ministry that has a vision, and our vision statement is to take material uh, from America that comes from a uh, Pentecostal perspective. It's wonderful material, but what we do is we take that material, we with permission, and we translate it into Hebrew to be used. So we take Sunday school material from America, we translate it into Hebrew, put a Messianic perspective on it. The, the, the translators are Israelis, believers, Messianic Jewish people, that were born and raised here, so they have a very Israeli Messianic perspective. And what we do, we make this available for them. It is a ministry. Uh, we're really blessed with the technology that we have nowadays. It's amazing how you can take material uh, with not a, uh, a huge budget, but a medium-sized budget, and produce quality material for these people. It is a ministry. We ask for them to help with the, cover the, some of the costs. But this ministry has been going on now for about 12 years, I think, it's been going on. They started out very simple, using the most simple technology, the simplest translation, but the project is mature and grown. And out of the, right now, there's around 60 or so established Messianic congregations within the country that are Hebrew, uh, where there's a firm, you know, there, we have home groups that are smaller here and there, but this is congregations, bodies with an, a leader. So out of those 60-something, 40 congregations are continuing to purchase our material, uh, by giving a donation, we give them the, it's a full quarter, 13 lessons with posters, themes, we develop our own games. We have two local Israeli artists that do all our graphic work for them. We are producing, now we are producing original work, like we're just now working on Captivity and Return, the story of the, the Jewish people going into captivity and then returning to the land and then tying that into our need to be uh, set free from our bondage of sin. And we're just getting ready to print next month. We'll be printing, which will be about a three-week process to take all this material. It's been about two years in the development. To do, it takes about two years to do one quarter for teachers, and we'll be printing that material. And it's lovely material, and it's wonderful, because there is not a lot of material at, uh, in Hebrew from a Christian perspective, but it is growing. So what processes do you go through to translate something? I tell you, when I first got involved with it, I did not realize the labor of love that it is to translate. I was familiar with a lot of the Bible translation work that's happened all over the world. I've supported it, 
Bible societies because I think obviously the word is the most important thing. But it's neat that when you get to a point is we have the, the, the New Testament in Hebrew from the 1800s. It was actually done by a, uh, a Hebrew Christian, Delich was his name, from the UK, who did the first translation of the New, New Testament from the original Greek into Hebrew. So that's been around for 100 plus years. Um, but what we're talking about is additional material to help the local body teach ch- you work, your children's worker, youth worker. You know how important sometimes material can help you in your ministry. So what we want to do is be a blessing by providing this material to them in Hebrew to help them train up their children in the ways of the Lord. And so that's really our vision statement to do that, to take this material. But I had no idea how difficult translation work could do. So we start with a base from English from the Assemblies of God in America who's given us permission to translate it with no problem. Please take the material. Please translate it into Hebrew. It's a labor of love. You take this material, then you translate it. But then you have to add a perspective, of what we would call a different cultural perspective, a different language perspective. Uh, the Messianic Jewish community has some of their own traditions and understanding. And then we have to make it general enough so that all different types of congregations... We have con- uh, conservative Messianic uh, 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 congregations here, and we have more evangelical or what you would maybe call charismatic congregations here. So the body here is very diverse. We thank the Lord for that, but it is such a labor of love to take this. I never realized you take it, you translate it, it goes to editor, then it comes back, then it goes uh, for more editorial process. And that editorial process and translating is quite a bit. And then what we do is then we have to lay it out with desktop publishing software. And then we hire an artist to produce original artwork for to go with the lessons. We hire uh, people to develop the games. I just had no idea when I got involved in this ministry what it took to do something like this. But it is so worth it. And we're getting next month. The printing process will take probably three to four weeks just to pr- produce 100 kits, what we call kits, for the teachers where they can get a, a bag with lessons for 10 students with the posters the games. Um, but it is incredible how complex and how long it takes to do this. Mm-hmm. But it really is a ministry, and there's wonderful people that volunteer their time. I mean hundreds of hours. There's one lady here that gives hundreds of hours a year to doing this. Mm-hmm. So how big is the Messianic community here in Israel? Well, there's been some question about that in the past. When I first came here 10 years ago, we heard numbers around 10,000. There is a ministry here in Jerusalem. It's well-known, well-established, called Kaspari. They did a survey. They, they, they raised the funds to do a, a survey, a, a, a census, I guess you could say. And they actually brought staff on to do this. And they spent two years, Paul, going around this country trying to find every home group, every within the Messianic Jewish community, as you well know, there are even small hidden groups within certain communities where they might face persecution, but they're worshiping Yeshua. They are born-again believers. And so they did this for about two years, and the number they came up with with the survey, once it was completed, and uh, they were able to put some autonomous numbers in there. There were some groups they found, uh, Ethiopian groups, that did not want to be discovered because they were afraid of persecution, but just said, look, we'll allow you to know that we have ten people in our home church, home group, every week. So the number they came up with was about 6,000. So what's your prayer for all this material that goes out into these communities? I tell you, what our, our prayer is dealing with generations is that it goes out to bless them. Because every congregation, uh, all these people are working, living, have families in Israel. Most Both parents have to work uh, to maintain the, the lifestyle they want. And so this material helps them. They're volunteering. Like in every congregation in the UK or within the US or within the body, when you have a congregation, they volunteer their time to teach children. And as they volunteer the time, it makes their life easier. And uh, when you can, as the, as the local congregation, can go to them and say, here's the material, please take this, we want you to use this. It's, and it gives the teacher a full quarterly, 13 lessons with a game to develop with them. We, every, every week has scripture verses. We have what's called Yomam Belush. And that's like a, 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 a sheet for activities for them to use during the, 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 uh, during the week. So we have Keflanu, which is our fun. And so they have these materials that they can hand out. It is important to these people. We get thank yous all the time from teachers all over the country who say, thank you for this material. Please produce more material. We need more material like this in Hebrew for us. Thank you for all that you do. Now, how would you like to be transported back in time to Jesus' time to see how he lived and worked? Well, now you can. 
there's a fantastic organization in Nazareth, Jesus' hometown, called the Nazareth Village. And I spoke with Nancy and I asked her, what is the Nazareth Village? Nazareth Village is a recreated first century village. Uh, according to archaeological and biblical research, we've uh, found that this land was actually the site of a first century farm, uh, mostly vineyards and olive trees. And then when we were excavating, we found a, an original first century wine press and some of the foundations of uh, terraced farming. So we've recreated this. It came as the dream of several people, and it's been supported by Christians not only here in this area but all over the world. When was the village started? Uh, the, it opened in the year 2000, but it started. the dream started in 1993, so it actually took seven years of research and other kinds of planning for it to come to reality. And actually since then we've added on too, so it's kind of a work in progress. So why was the village actually started in the first place? Uh, one of the local residents, local Christians, had a dream that he wanted people to see the way Jesus actually lived rather than just the dead stones. He wanted to see some living stones. So what sort of things can you actually see here? You can see uh, an olive press, you can see a wine press, you can see the way people uh, weaved, the way they lived, the way a carpenter shop would have looked much like Joseph had, maybe the way a landlord or a very rich person lived. You can see sheep and donkeys and uh, vineyards and threshing floors and all kinds of things. Now, do you have many olive trees on the land? The olive tree, uh, we have about 100 olive trees on the land. We actually harvest them. The olive tree is very hardy. It's a symbol of peace and prosperity because it's uh, not only for the generation that plants it and harvests it, it's for the generations and generations after. And so, so we have one tree here that's actually 400 years old. Wow. Now, what's the symbol of the organization here that you use? We have uh, a lamp, uh, much like a first century lamp that we've, we have made uh, from pottery with a, with a uh, cotton wick. And it's uh, the symbol of hope because we believe that Jesus is the light of the world and we want that hope to be a part of what we leave with people. So you're a volunteer here working in this organization. What's it like for you personally walking through first century time where Jesus would have been around? Exciting. Yeah. Um, I learn something new every day. Yeah. Okay. That's good. So you have a website for people who'd like to see more and know more about the organization? www.nazarethvillage.com